Now, it's probably not that often you need to do math in Windows PowerShell, but in case you do, there are some operators designed for math. You've got the plus sign for addition, which also does string concatenation, piecing two strings together. You've got the dash for subtraction. You've got the star or asterisk for multiplication. A forward slash is division. Putting a dash on front of a number makes it a negative. And you've got the percent sign, which gets the remainder from a division operation. There's some shortcut math operators too. For example, dollar sign $i plus plus takes whatever's in i, adds 1, and puts the result back in i. Same thing with i minus minus. Takes whatever's in i, subtracts 1, and puts the result back in i. Equal sign is the assignment operator. And there are some what are called unary operators here. Um, let's say we take var and set it equal to 6, or 5, or 10, or any other number. We've assigned that value to the variable var. If I then said var plus equals 5, I've taken whatever was in var, added 5 to it, and put the result back in var. So if I started by assigning var with 5 and then did var plus equal 5, var now equals 10. There are some more comparison operators. Now we already looked at equal, not equal, less than or equal, greater than or equal, greater than and less than. We looked at those guys already. There's also the like operator. And that like lets you use like a wildcard, the asterisk specifically. The opposite of that is not like, which also accepts the asterisk as a wildcard. So PowerShell, like, star, shell is a true comparison because PowerShell contains that, that substring there. So that's how the wildcards work. If you're working with collections of objects, and in PowerShell you are a lot, there's the contains operator. And this tells you if a collection contains a particular object or not. So if I take the variable ARR and set it equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a comma-separated list. So it becomes an array and goes inside R. ARR-contains 3 will be true because the array does contain the object 3. ARR-contains 5 is false because the array does not contain the object 5. Now, so far, everything we've looked at have been case-insensitive, not case-sensitive operators. There are case-sensitive versions of all these. If you need to do a case-sensitive comparison, just put a C in front of the operator. So dash CEQ is a case-sensitive equality. CNE, CLE, CGE, CGT, CLT, C-like, and C-contains. If you need to explicitly use case insensitivity, again, by default, all the regular operators are case insensitive, but if you need to explicitly do it, just to make sure everyone reading your script is aware that this is supposed to be a case insensitive operation, you can just put an I on the front. I like, I not like, I contains, I EQ, and so forth. We've got some logical operators, and we've looked at these dash and, dash or, and dash not. Dash and evaluates two expressions, and if both are true, then the final result is true. Dash or evaluates two expressions, and if either result is true, then the total result is true. And then dash not simply reverses the logic of whatever's after it, changes it from true to false or false to true. You can get more help on all of these operators. Run help star operator star to see a list of help topics available for the different types of operators. And then you run help with the specific topic name, such as about comparison operators, for help on that. You can also look in the PowerShell help utility. It's a graphical utility. It's included right on this disk. Now, a couple of type operators for types. The dash is operator tells you if an object is a particular object type or not dollar sign var is, and in square brackets, string. That will return true if dollar sign var is, in fact, a string. As, dash as, will change something. So if I said dollar sign var as int, it'll take whatever's in var and attempt to convert it to an integer. Let's take a look at all these operators in action. Let's experiment with some of these new operators. We'll start with a simple expression, 5 plus 5. PowerShell evaluates that and displays the result. Quick quiz. What's one megabyte plus one gigabyte? PowerShell can tell you because it recognizes the MB and GB abbreviations. Now, let's create a variable, var, 
and set it equal to 10. Next, we'll use a shortcut math operator to take whatever is in var and add 10 to it. The result is displayed, 20. Now, let's do the same thing with multiplication. Multiplying whatever is in var by 10 and storing the result back in var. Now, we can look at what's in var, and it should be 200, and it is. Let's look at comparison operators. Does PowerShell equal PowerShell even with the difference in case? Yes, it does, because dash EQ is case insensitive. Is PowerShell like star shell star? Yes, it is, because shell can be found within PowerShell. Here's one that would make your grammar teacher cringe. Is PowerShell not like star CMD star? Yes, PowerShell is not like star CMD star because the string PowerShell does not contain the substring CMD. How about some more complex examples? Does 5 equal 5? Sure it does. Is PowerShell like shell? Yes. Since both subcomparisons are true, the overall result is true. Let's flip the last subcomparison around by using a shortcut for the not operator. This new expression will be false, because while the first subcomparison is true, the second one is also true. The not operator reverses the logic to false, so we're testing true and false, which is false. Take a minute to read through that so it makes sense to you. Let's play with some type operators now. Is hello an object of the string type? Yes, it is. Is hello an object of the integer type? No, it isn't. You can learn more about operators in PowerShell by asking for help star operator star. You'll see a list of available topics to ask for further help on. For example, asking for help about underscore comparison underscore operators will display information about all of the available comparison operators. Windows PowerShell has rich support for regular expressions, and it uses industry standard regular expression syntax. It gives you the match operator to determine if a particular string matches a particular regular expression. And that's about all we're going to say about regular expressions in this course. They're covered in more detail in the intermediate Windows PowerShell course. Please pause this video now and follow the instructions in your lab guide to complete this lab. There are hints in the lab guide if you need them. And try to complete the lab without referring to the solution in your lab guide. When you're done, resume this video and I'll review a sample solution with you. All right, let's see some samples for lab 14-1. For task one, I used the like operator to compare var and exec. For task two, I'm changing to the root of the C drive and running get child item with the recurs option. I'm piping those objects through where object, asking it to keep only those objects whose full name property is like exec. This will take a while to run. If you get bored, just press control C to interrupt it. For task three, I'm doing the same thing, but expanding my where object criteria. Now I want those objects whose full name is like exec and whose length is less than 200 bytes. Again, might take a while to run, so if you get tired of waiting, just press control C to stop the command from running. Finally, task four is perhaps a more practical example. I'm getting all the files again by using get child item and its recurs option, but I'm using where object to only keep those who have a length property greater than 100 megabytes. This is a handy way to somewhat quickly find larger files on your drive. Once again, it can take a while to run, so once you've seen enough, you can press Control-C to break it. 